honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the Paladino Live Network. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on all of your favorite podcasting apps. Thank you for downloading and listening to this show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. As the Minnesota Timberwolves season, of course, came to an abrupt end in game number six. We'll talk about that. The Timberwolves also have a new president of basketball operations, it is not Mr. Sachin Gupta, though he's likely to be staying on, of course, as Vice President of Operations or number three. We'll see how that goes. The new President of Basketball Operations will be now former Denver Nuggets President of Basketball Operations, Tim Connolly. If you are not Tim said, here I come! All right, well, here we go. Uh, the Timberwolves being aggressive, making a big move here. Again, Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez taking no prisoners going into the offseason and, yeah, aiming high, so to speak, looking for a new president of basketball operations. We'll certainly be talking about him. He'll be the feature presentation of this episode when you have a new Pobo. Hopefully this time things will be okay. This time it'll be right. Unfortunately, the press coverage still hasn't happened, so we'll have to talk about that in State of the Timberwolves 2022. We'll talk about that. Hopefully it won't be as cheesy and stupid and ridiculous as the Gerson Rosas one was. That one was not so much Gerson Rosas' fault. It's just It just shows how meaningless and stupid and idiotic it was in the first place. Oh, we're all a cute family, collaborative, and blah, 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 when that wasn't true. So don't do that ever again. Ever, ever, ever again. I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> With that said, let's talk about game number six really quickly. I know it's late. I know it's old news. I know it's beating a dead horse. Timberwolves had the lead and they lost. Okay? Timberwolves had a double-digit lead and they lost going into the fourth quarter. Well, so what else is new? It was only, it was the third time. Third time's a charm, right? Yeah, third time's a charm, all right, for the Memphis Grizzlies. Anthony Edwards played a wonderful game, 30 points. He wasn't perfect, but he played well. Let's just say Jade McDaniels, of course, showing what he can be. He's just so valuable, helping the Timberwolves down the stretch, stay in the game, also build the lead, this and that. It was a bit of back and forth, but things just kind of went south. Yeah. And ultimately, South, the Southern team won the game. Memphis Grizzlies 114-106. Again, I'm not going to have a very detailed, over-the-top game review here. But Jane McDaniels showing how much freaking promise he has going forward. 8 of 9 from the floor, 5 of 6 from downtown. All he did was miss one three-pointer in 9 attempts. That is just incredible uh, performance overall by Jane McDaniels. Really appreciate what he brings. And it led me to say, uh, basically along the lines of, <laughs> like, there's just two guys that I really would want to, there's just two guys on the roster that I super duperly want to keep going into the future, um, as mean as that might sound. And yes, it was kind of mean. I'm sure people didn't like it very much, uh, what I said, because so, notice somebody was missing, Carl Anthony Towns. Um, I was just angry. I was extremely angry at the time, and I, I was commenting on, so I'm kind of jumping into the Twitter account for a moment, just the tweet I said, was watching the Anthony Edwards and Jaden McDaniels press conference. Let me tell you something. It's Anthony Edwards' team. Uh, maybe I'll get back to it. That wasn't the exact one I was looking for. It's Anthony Edwards. Yeah, here we go. It's Anthony Edwards with Daylight second. Outside of Jaden McDaniels and Jordan McLaughlin, I couldn't care less about the rest of the team at this stage. I've seen enough. Yep, when it came to Carl Anthony Towns just not performing in the big moments, this and that. Um, and I used to see Kevin Garnett that way, and I'm not kidding. I, you know, I mean, he had some big moments. The Sacramento game, Game 7, was a defining moment for Garnett's career, and it was fantastic, and it was a good sign going forward, but unfortunately the Timberwolves never really played in the Game 7. That meant anything after that with Kevin Garnett on the roster. Things quickly snowballed because we... I don't know. You tried to hit a Grand Slam home run with, with two guys that had a shelf life of about six months. So, I mean, it is what it is. You, you kind of kind of, sort of gambled. You went for it, and it didn't didn't work out. You didn't win, and then you ultimately didn't win the title. But now I'm going way off into la-la land, though, I suppose. See, that's where the positive 
goes forward with this. Even though I'm frustrated, uh, I was frustrated and angry with Carl Anthony Towns. Six of 19, 0 of three from downtown. Six of 19. Like, come on, man. Like, why? Why? Why is he struggling that much? Again, the four personal follows. Patrick Beverly followed out. Patrick Beverly, you know. You think that he brings the the manliness and maturity to the team, but in a lot of ways it seemed like he brought kind of the opposite in the later stages of the season, which kind of pissed me off as well. Now, I love Patrick Beverly. I love that he brings some toughness and some grittiness to the roster. Uh, take no prisoners attitude. A bleep you. We're going to beat you, you you fools, you know, tonight. That kind of thing. With swear words included, I'm sure, that I didn't include. <laughs> some assembly required, yeah. Um, what am I talking about? I don't know. I'm just talking about Patrick Beverly. Um, sometimes the maturity level, So sometimes it goes from, like, now we're men, now we're tough, to, like, no, we're actually acting just like the we're acting just like the teams I don't like. You know, like taunting people after making a shot or taunting them after missing a shot or blah, blah, blah. Stuff like that can drive you absolutely up the wall. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, what's his future going forward? I don't know. Um, I don't think I'm going to pay him $30 million, and he's eligible for an extension, and Boy, it's a contract year, D'Angelo. Good job. Good job selling yourself, buddy. Great. Great job selling yourself, D'Angelo. I know. There, there go all the listeners. There go all the listeners. I know this guy's too negative. You know he didn't play well in the playoffs. Three of seven from the floor. Three of seven. He was actually benched in the game for Jordan McLaughlin. He was benched in the game for Jordan McLaughlin. Yeah, he was. He was benched in the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was. <laughs> And it kind of happened more than once in this series. Yeah, Joe Russell making over thirty million benched for Jordan McLaughlin. I mean, just just let that sink in. Just look at the dollar difference here. We're talking about twenty nine million dollars a year difference in price. Yeah, and Jade McDaniel's outplayed him. Yeah, he did. He outplayed him. He didn't turn the ball over once. He played almost the same amount of minutes. Didn't turn the, turn the ball over once. D'Angelo had four turnovers. D'Angelo. D'Angelo. The, okay, yes. He was just kind of a mess out there, reckless. See, it's not just 3 of 7, which is not the worst shooting performance I've ever seen. Okay, Jordan's is better, 4 of 5. But yeah, but you're not going to expect that from anybody every damn night. Nobody's going to be that good every night. You, if you expect that, you're crazy. But it's the selection of the shots. The selection of the shots that sets you... That just sets you on fire in frustration and anger when you're wanting this team to win. This is a desire to win. This is not a bash the team, F the Timberwolves, they suck. That's not me. You want to just bash the team and F the Timberwolves, they suck? Okay, fine. That's that's people on the upper deck half of the time that, uh, I don't want to be here. I could be doing something else. Then get the hell out of here. You know, because I remember uh, being at games like that in the past, in the uh, way, way back in the day. Because I go, yeah. Let's just say I, I haven't gone to games very often in the last many, many, many years. I'd rather watch them and analyze, analyze them that way. So... Yeah, it takes a lot of time to get to the game. It takes a lot of time to get back, to get in the game. You lose a lot of time, and doing podcasts would be really difficult doing it that way, I think. Plus, uh, shift changes and stuff don't help either. Um, but no, the selection of the shots by D'Angelo Russell are the real problem. Because, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just like Rashad McCants. Like, early in the shot clock, you're up by a small amount, three, four, five points. It's early in the shot clock with about two minutes left in the game, three minutes left in the game. And you launch a shot from Timbuktu with 19 seconds left in the shot clock. What kind of horse shit is that? Pardon my French, I know, I apologize. But stuff like that. It, it makes you just fly out of your seat, whether you're on the couch, you're at a computer desk, which is usually what I'm at all the time. Um, you're, you're in the seat at the building, in the arena. You're going to fly out of your seat screaming something along the lines, maybe something like this. Cam Dantzler, what are you doing? This game is is fucking horrible. It's that kind of thing because if and if and if we're doing it, you got to think the teammates might be thinking that as well. It it it's irritating. You're you're hurting us and you missed. And the other team comes racing down the court and they get a they get some kind of a mo- momentum play, drive into the basket, catch and shoot three, blah blah blah, and next thing you know it's a two-point or one-point game and the momentum's going the other direction. Great, thanks. It's stuff like that that can drive you crazy. That ain't worth thirty million dollars, especially when you keep doing it. That's the that's the spoiled little dummy that just got off the bench. That's like, give me mine, give me mine, give me mine. That's what that is. 
That's what that is. The guy making, you know, XML. That's like William Avery when he would come in. He'd be like, give me the ball, give me the goal. Oh, yes, I made a shot. Oh, I missed again. Oh, I missed again. Oh, I missed. Oh, I made a shot. And then you wouldn't see him for a month because he sucked. <laughs> he didn't deserve to be on the card. So it's stuff like that. Now, D'Angelo Russell is better than William Avery. But at the same time, the, the behavior, the behavior is kind of similar sometimes. Sometimes it's kind of similar. And then you get the lackadaisical def- defense. Then all of a sudden he cares, and then he doesn't care, and then he cares, and then he doesn't care, and then he cares, and he doesn't care. See, stuff like that can just set you on fire as well. It's ridiculous. So, <sighs> Jared Vanderbilt, I don't know, is he hurt? Is he this? Is he that? Jordan, uh, Jaden McDaniels played freaking awesome. That's part of the reason why he didn't play much, being Jared Vanderbilt. Um, Greg Monroe got a little bit of time in the final game because Carl was not playing that great, and Vanderbilt... I think he was hurt. Like It felt like the whole second half of the season. He wasn't the same guy. So, again, um, looking towards a possible power forward in the draft is probably not the dumbest idea in the world. And uh, It's nice to see you. Uh, it's it's going to be very interesting to see which way Mr. Tim Connolly goes with the power forward position and with D'Angelo Russell in the offseason. That's a big deal. It's a big deal going forward. Because uh, as much as I love Jared Vanderbilt, I love him to death, I don't think he's a full-time power forward, and that just it, it hurts saying that. But I don't think he is. I don't think he can. I don't think he can handle the workload of it, because he's always on the ground writhing in pain every single, you know, every five minutes or something. He's writhing in pain for some reason. So I don't think he can handle it. <laughs> I, 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 I I don't know. I don't know if it's frame can handle it or what the deal is. Uh, and you know, he's not the largest guy. He's not Carl Malone. Put it that way. Um, but again, in giving up the big lead down the stretch for the third game, to think that it hadn't happened twice in a single series in the NBA playoff history, for it to happen three times, and it was us. And I just saw the number three flashing on the screen. <sighs> yeah, it's just that's just all you need to say. Um, it, it, it does tell you the team Timberwolves could have could have won this series. Uh, Memphis is it was extremely tough. They have some gritty, tough players on the other side that can shoot that have a higher IQ than some of our guys down the stretch. Like, you know, Desmond Bain playing with a high IQ, and he pissed me off. John Morant, well, extremely talented. He's got a, I don't know, he's not the guy I thought he was. I thought he was, <laughs> I thought he was kind of a nice guy. I, I don't anymore. I, I, he's a little bit of an ass, just like, you know, 60% of the league. Everybody's looking to show each other up, that kind of crap. Um, the other fitting end of this game, that was the absolute dagger of the game was Tyus Jones' three-pointer, and that just figures as well how Tyus left this team um, getting a contract that he couldn't get here because of the salary cap space, this and that. Uh, it was an offer we couldn't match, that type of deal. And, of course, he hit the dagger three-pointer that put the Memphis Grizzlies up by enough that the game was probably over. So that was disappointing and also at the same time not surprising. It just totally figured uh, with that said. Um so now we'll move into Tim Conley, if humanly possible. This should be a two-segment show, kind of basically like, it, that was kind of like a, this is like a segment within a segment, like a mini-segment before talking about Tim Conley and, uh, you know, Sasha and Gupta and all that. We'll also talk about the postseason a little bit. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to be the most genius analytical, you know, guy when it comes to the postseason, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, I, I've kept up with it, but not as close as, as I'd like to, that type of thing. Um, again, this is a Timberwolves show. It's that type of deal. I definitely have thoughts on this and that, so we'll, we'll get to that very shortly. Of course, so that was the end of the first round. As for Tim Conley, well, very happy to have him. Of course, he was officially promoted to president of basketball operations for the Denver Nuggets all the way back in 2013, the same time Flip Saunders came in and took a small ownership stag with the Minnesota Timberwolves, left ESPN to become our president of basketball operations, and you just knew at some point he was going to become a, uh, the coach of the team one way or another. I was hoping he wouldn't, pardon me, <clears throat> partially because of, or, I mean, you know, I was hoping, yeah, it's just, you don't want to overstretch a guy. You like it when one guy focuses on this and the other guy focuses on that when it comes to coach and president and all that crap. And that's what killed Tom Thibodeau, quite frankly. Not literally killed him, but it killed him as a killed him as an employee for the Timberwolves, anyway. Um, so I was hoping Flip wouldn't do that. And it's like he, we've we've seen him coach. We didn't win the championship with Flip Saunders. We had one playoff run, one. We never overachieved, unfortunately. Uh, 
I like him better as a president of basketball than a head coach. Flip Saunders was a good coach. He was not a great coach. A good coach. A potentially great president of basketball, but unfortunately, tragedy struck, and we didn't doggone get to see it, which really drives, which really, you know, made me, (laughs) it literally made me weep at the time. I was really sad about that. Um, And I think I told you about the horrible dream I had right around that time uh, when Flip Saunders went from bad to worse. Uh, That's when I had the horrible dream that uh, he passed away, that he had passed away in the dream. It was the newspaper headline on the internet from Star Tribune about Flip Saunders passing away, and then and it ended up happening a month later. So sometimes uh, it unexplained happens. Um, yeah, uh, But let's get to where we're going to be now with Tim Conley. Again, he took over, in, in, uh, took over after the uh, 12-13 season president of basketball operations, Flip Saunders did the same, and both general managers made pretty bad mistakes around that time. Their first significant move was not a good one, because, <laughs> let's go, because, let's start with Flip Saunders first. Flip Saunders ended up taking Shabazz Muhammad and Corgi Zhang. <laughs> you know who those guys are, right? Shabazz Muhammad is no longer in the league. Gorgi Zheng is just kind of floating around out there. A guy named uh, the Greek freak, Giannis. Giannis Ant. Let's just leave it at that because I'm not good at pronouncing his last name. I'm still not because people, most people just call him the Greek freak and all that. Um, future Hall of Famer, no doubt about it. NBA Finals MVP. One of the best players in the league. You know, a, a league MVP type of guy. A little better than Shabazz Muhammad, isn't he? A little better than Gorgi Zheng. Um, you could take 15 of those guys, and they're still not good enough to match the Greek freak at the end of the day. Uh, and she wouldn't win any championships. She probably wouldn't even make the playoffs if your whole team was filled up with guys like that. You wouldn't even get close, actually. Um, so that was a blemish, unfortunately, where things quickly got better for Flip after that. Tim Connolly. Tim Connolly. Yeah, yeah, you know, the whole draft night thing. You know, they drafted a guy named Rudy Gobert. Yeah, you know, Stifle Tower, one of the greatest defensive players in NBA history by now. I'm not sure he's on the Greek freak level, but absolutely wonderful player for the Utah Jazz. A headache for uh, Carl Anthony Towns for years. And Kevin Love and guys like that. He is a tough, tough, great player, obviously. Got the long arms, great defense. Wonderful, uh, big big reason why the Jazz is vi- are valuable. And you notice how Rudy Gobert never played for the Denver Nuggets, and he's been on Utah the whole time. Well, on June 27th of that year, 2013, the Denver Nuggets traded the rights of Rudy Gobert, Fonze to the, the uh, Utah Jazz for somebody named Eric Green. You ever heard of Eric Green? Anyone? Anyone back there? Well, maybe you heard of him at the time. He didn't do anything. Didn't do anything at all. Uh, wow. Ouch. <laughs> that, that, ouch. Yeah. 46th. Oh, he was a, yep, those of them were second round picks. So, what's his name had identified? A really nice second round player, but I guess he traded him away for another second round player. Who's not quite as good, unfortunately. Not quite as good. Uh, Eric Green, let's see, he lasted two years in the league. And he played in 52 games. 52 games. Ouch. Uh, and averaged about three points a game. 20%, three-point percentage, about a little under 30, actually. Uh, what more is there to say about an assist? About one assist. Averaged about mm, eight and a half minutes a game. Yeah, Eric Green, and this is a straight-up trade, folks. Straight-up trade. Yeah, straight-up trade for uh, Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. So, again, <laughs> luckily that wasn't, uh, luckily that's not the finished product, but it's just amazing how many good and bad general managers start off with horrible trades. Do we have to talk about it again? We know what David Kahn did, right? We know he uh, made the trade, the, the good trade, got rid of uh, Randy Foy, and Mike Miller, who just, you know, Randy Foy was m- mediocre at best. He was never a 16 points a player a game again, but he came a, became a really good three-point shooter later on, but more of a role player specialist kind of guy for future teams like Orlando and Denver and such. Denver, ironically, which is funny. Tim Conley did acquire him later on, yes. Um, but yes, Mike Miller, you know, ended up being way better everywhere he went than here. Everywhere. And everywhere he played before, of course, again, Memphis Grizzlies and such, and Orlando Magic. Um, but we got rid of Mike Miller and blah, blah, blah. Ended up taking Rubio with that fifth pick. So, okay, it was cool getting a fifth pick for those guys. 
And then the next pick was, well, it was Johnny Flynn and Steph Curry wins that. <clears throat> you get the idea. You know, my one of, <laughs> old rubber muncher himself, Steph Curry, ended up uh, being the guy after, we all know. So that was an introduction to David Kahn. It's just amazing. But um, it's funny how all three general managers started out terribly, or president of basketball, sorry, started out terribly but got better. Uh, at least two of them got better and one of them really never did. It was just one weird thing after another with... Uh, David Kahn looked on as one of the worst uh, <laughs> personnel directors in sport, the, the history of professional sports, actually. Um, the second trade wasn't all that good either. Randy Foy again acquired that summer, of all people, Randy Foy by uh, Tim Conley for Kevin Murphy, Andre Godala, guys like that. Well, I don't know if it was Kevin Murphy from them, but Andre Godala was on Denver at one point. I don't know, it's a mix of players, Beardrands and Richard Jefferson, Brandon Rush, blah, 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 multiple picks and all that. It was a three-team trade, and we'll move on from that. But Andre Godala wound up on the uh, Golden State Warriors regardless. I believe he was on Denver at the time. And Foy was on Utah. Um, Foy traveled quite a bit, didn't he? Um, and Godala ended up becoming finals MVP in 2015. So interesting how that turned out. Uh, Andre Miller was traded away from Denver. Denver won up with Jay Vesley. He's all right. Aaron Brooks had some moments. Stored for Jordan Hamilton. Other moves. Uh, Nurk Nurkic. Um, this was a good trade. Doug McDermott can shoot. Anthony Randolph was, you know, mediocre at best. Another one of David Kahn's messy players that came here and didn't do anything. Doug McDermott can shoot. Nice player. But you got Nurkic. You got a second round pick. And you got Gary Harris on the Denver Nuggets, who was very valuable for years for them. So that was the first of many really good moves by Tim Conley. Aaron Aflalo acquired from Orlando. Loved the guy. Absolutely love him. But he kind of his career kind of diminished very quickly, which is too bad. Fournier became a nice player. Ron Devin Marble. Marble. <laughs> and it's 2014 second round pick. Blah, blah, blah. Timothy Mozgov. Tim Tim Timothy Mozgov for two first round picks to Denver. Okay. Jameer Nelson for Nate Robinson. Two smaller guys who can be spark plugs. Okay, it kind of is what it is. Nelson was solid. From the Celts to the, uh, yep. So Nate Robinson went to the Celts. Uh, nice acquisition as they uh, dumped Aaron Afalo and Alonzo Gee to Denver. For Will Barton, nice nice acquisition. A first round pick, which is a top 14 protected. Somebody named Victor Claver. Victor Cleaver? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just teasing. And Tom Robb. Thomas Robinson, power forward. Well, all right. <laughs> Here's another weird one. The rights for Senk Akyol. I have no idea who that is. Forgive me. You're going to be maybe I'm an idiot and everybody knows who that is. There's not even a link to him. So he's never, he never played a second in the NBA. JaVale McGee, Mr. Uh, Shaq's favorite guy, JaVale McGee, for uh, Shaq and a Fool. And another guy whose name I couldn't pronounce in my life depended on it. Shaq, should I try it? Shaq. Woody Bear, oh, maybe, maybe, Chuck Woody Bear, Chuck Woody Bear, Mod, Modabom, okay, all right, cool, nice to meet you, Chucky, is, is that what they call him, Chucky, yeah, well, he never played, I don't think he played in the NBA, did he, did not, nope, a lot of, uh, all I see is white, all I see is a white box, Chucky, old Chucky, he was a second round pick in 2011, Okay. Or am I going... No, I'm not going backwards, am I? Please tell me I'm not going backwards. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's just funny, though. So he was like one of those stashed guys. Yeah, that's what he was. Ty Lawson moving around. That was another guy that David Kahn traded. Uh, yeah, he was on Denver for a while. He was good, wasn't he? I liked him. He wound up with uh, Houston Rockets for a bunch of guys. Pa Pablo Prigri uh, Prigri uh, Prigioni, pardon me. He's on the Wolves coaching staff. So that's, yeah, yeah, he's on the Wolves coaching staff, which is funny. Uh, first round pick protected, blah, blah, blah. I don't need to go over all of these, but Prigri Prigrioni, pardon me, I'm just an idiot. Prigioni. Duh. DJ Augustine, Steve Novak acquired for Randy Foy. Randy Foy, years later, to the Oaktown, Oklahoma City Thunder. Not Oakland, California. Multiple second round picks and a million and a... 1.1 uh, million cash. Cash considerations for somebody named... Daniel Hamilton, cool. <laughs> Jeffrey Love, yeah, some of these moves are just what they are. Uh, Mo Williams, yep, former, ended up being a Timberwolf later on from Denver. 
Uh, that rights to Sank Utko never played a minute. Denver also got two million bucks, so everybody wanted the Sank guy who never played a second. Maybe I'm an idiot and he was a he's a superstar overseas, but he uh, never played here, or he never played in the NBA. Uh, Nurkic, they traded Nurkic away. Denver did to Portland for Mason Plumlee in a second round pick. I think I'd rather have Nurkic because yeah, they also gave up a first rounder. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And they say they both exchanged one. Ex uh, Portland got less than two million, and Denver got a little over two million. It's one of those weird kind of moving money around type of deals as well. Uh, Roy Hibbert got went there for a second round pick. I don't remember him doing a whole lot in Denver. I remember him doing a, a lot more in Indiana. He just became an injury prone like you know tank basically later in his career. <sighs> mm. Jamal Crawford, yeah, Jamal Crawford was on Denver. No, he was on the Clippers at the time. So that was kind of a weird move there. I don't understand this trade actually. I'm confused by it. What? Huh. Denver only got a second round pick. They must have been just trying to clean up money. Yeah, it's got to be because what the heck? I think Denver must have been just facilitating things here in this one. What a mess, huh? Yeah, ironic that Danilo, Danilo Gallinari is right now on the LA, or excuse me, on Atlanta. So that's kind of funny. Yeah, I think Denver was just trying to clear cap space. Tim Conley, Devin Harris was acquired. Obviously, a guy who could do it could, could be solid. Doug, Doug McDermott to Dallas. Kind of a big mess. Moody. Yep, they got rid of Moody. That was a very disappointing pick by the Denver Nuggets. That didn't amount to a whole lot. Uh, Denver got Jordan Vanderbilt. Jar Jared Vanderbilt for Justin Jackson. I'm kind of going too long. I apologize. They traded away Wilson Chandler to Denver for a second round pick. Okay. But they acquired, yep. Yeah. But they also, uh, yeah, it was a cap thing. That was a cap move again. Sorry if I'm going too long on this. I probably shouldn't. Uh, but the acquisition again. Let's see if I can keep moving. Yeah, and then there's the big one where it involved the Wolves. This was the, the exciting one. Um, where I think Gerson Rosas won this trade, particularly against his, his future, uh, yeah, his, uh, against the guy who would, who would take over for him. <laughs> you know, like months after he got fired. About six months after he got fired. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of ironic how, uh, Yep, the Timberwolves dumped off Noah Von Leho. We just weren't going to play. Shabazz Navier, we just weren't going to play. Katie Bates Chop, we weren't going to play. Gerald Green came from the Rockets, I believe. Or was he on Atlanta? Who cares? Uh, and that's when Clint Capella, Clint Capella wound up in Atlanta. It's just been wonderful ever since from the, uh, the Rockets. The Wolves dumped off all those guys to Denver. And also, uh, you know, he traded away uh, Robert Covington, Bob Covington, to the... Okay, so that's their cap hit. That's not money being moved around. Yeah, yeah, it is money being moved around, but it's a cap hit type of thing as well. Uh, it's showing how much the cap hit is. Robert Covington to the Rockets. Wolves got Evan Turner, who was a salary dump, you know, with $8.6 million. We didn't play him, and he left, basically. Juan Her Juancho Hernan Gomez, mediocre at best, blah, blah, blah. Malik Beasley, valuable piece. Jared Vanderbilt, valuable piece for a combined $4 million of those two guys at the time. So very, very inexpensive uh, acquisitions. He cleared up a ton of cap space, so great, 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 great move by Gerson Rosas that helped free up cap space for future moves, of course, and such. Uh, and he dumped a lot of guys that uh, aren't really in the league now. Noah Vonley's not in the league. Uh, Napier's not in the league. Gerald Green's not in the league. Oh, well, we didn't trade Gerald Green, but... Uh, Nada Bates' job, Kata Bates' job is like barely a 12-man with the Spurs. or not a playoff team. Covington, you know, good player, but we didn't, you know, he's he was expensive and, uh, you know, we weren't really, we didn't really need him at the time, that kind of thing. Napier, too bad. He was kind of a nice player, but didn't work out long-term. Denver got Javel McGee back. That was funny, just for kind of spare parts. Aaron Golden and Gary Clark. Aaron Gordon, nice acquisition. Got rid of, yeah, that's when Gary Harris wound up with the uh, Orlando Magic. Man, Gary Harris is making a lot of money. $19 million. Mm. And then the final move made by Tim Conley. They acquire, uh, the Denver Nuggets acquire Brian Forbes. Yeah, Bull Bull, P.J. Dozier to Boston, and Wancho Hernan Gomez to the Spurs. That's pretty much what it was. Uh, Wancho Hernan Gomez was the guy who moved out and a, and a Denver second-round pick. Or Bull Bull. Yeah, I 
I'm not sure what's going on there, but we'll see what happens with him with Boston. I guess he's been kind of invisible ever since. So Brian Forbes, eh, you don't really hear much about him either. He's just kind of moving spare parts around. But there's some good moves. There's some not so good moves. Of course, again, the drafting, the drafting has been pretty good for the Denver Nuggets. I was a huge fan of Jamal Murray going into the draft. Tim Conley agreed with me and took him. The Wolves passed on, you know, that would be uh, Tom Thibodeau passed on Jamal Murray and took Chris Dunn. Uh, who won that argument? At the time, I was like, oh, I'm okay. I like Chris Dunn, too. You know, I'd be happy with Chris Dunn. He's a nice second second choice for me. Yep, so I look like an idiot saying that. I should have just stuck with Jamal Murray there. Would have been a freaking awesome, um, absolutely awesome move if the Wolves were able to get Jamal Murray in that draft. But unfortunately, we did not. We went with Chris Dunn, who's done a whole lot of nothing. Uh, pun semi-intended. Um, and of course, this this second-round pick guy who's won back-to-back MVP, some joke some joke of a player. Okay, I know. Nikola, jo- Nikola Jokic, who's known as the Joker. Greatest second-round pick ever. I know. There have been quite a few. Obviously, the Spurs made some great moves in the past, you know, like Mono Ginobili and others, uh, Tony Parker, guys like that. Late first-round pick in Tony Parker's case. Um, hopefully, Tim Conley could continue uh, success in the draft. Wolves could use that at the 19th pick. I have a lot of faith in Tim Conley making the 19th pick for the Wolves, probably possibly more so than uh, Sasha Gupta, but at the same time, Sasha Gupta knows what he's doing as well, and there's a reason why he was a finalist for the Sacto job, and I can imagine his frustration. He has not answered calls from uh, possible reporters like Johnny Cra- Johnny Krasinski, Johnny Athletic, as they call him, or, uh, you know, Darren Doogie Wolfson, guys like that, the Scoop Podcast, guys like that. Uh, Channel 5, I believe, he's with, right? Um, so, he's not, uh, Sasha Group has not been answering anything. I mean, I can imagine the feeling, and, you know, I mean, ha- believe me, in the workplace, it's like <laughs> less qualified people that work on different shifts have been scooping up good jobs that were, you know, on their shift. It's because just because I didn't want to go to, I didn't want to change shifts, which is the problem. It's just, it's just frustrating watching that. And so I can kind of relate in a way where I'm getting, you know, where you watch people fly past you, it's really annoying. Sasha Gupta, though, in this case, unfortunately, this guy is, you know, is more qualified at the time. Just, unfortunately, way more expensive as well. Uh, he will take him being Tim Conley. will have a $40 million five-year deal. And, of course, the uh, stake, in the comp- uh, stake in the Timberwolves as well. A uh, bigger portion than what Flip Saunders had, apparently, with the Timberwolves. But it's not nearly as much as I used to believe. I used to believe it was something like 5% of the team. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> They didn't give him that much, uh, and especially now. Um, if 5% of a $1.5 billion uh, investment, holy crap, that's a lot. <laughs> so it's nothing crazy like that. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, there's the up and Adrian Payne also. That's another topic. I'll be seeing that flash on the screen here. Interesting how that happened here. Yeah, Adrian Payne, who played for the Wolves for like a year and a half, ended up uh, getting murdered in Orlando on May 9th. So... Yikes. 31 years of age. You know, better college player than NBA player. Um, I remember being extremely excited when we got him, and then unfortunately just, you know, didn't pan out to be a whole lot in the NBA. But, you know, it, it's, it's freaking sad, though, to see that that happened to him. Unfortunately, shot shot in uh, Florida. So, no, California, Orange County. Um, really freaking sad. Yep, first degree murder, of course. So somebody was arrested, somebody named Doherty. Interesting. Mm. So, yep, phenomenal college player. Absolutely great. That's why it was exciting to get him. Uh, Flip uh, acquired him, of course, a good friend of uh, Mr. Good friend of Mr., uh, you know, Tom Izzo and all that. Flip Saunders and Tom Izzo, about the same age and big, big friends forever. So that was kind of like a union thing. And all that. I mean, yeah, that was kind of like, you know, friends coming together and all that. Um, yeah, it's too bad. Really sad. Sad story with Adrian Payne as well. So we'll give Adrian Payne a moment of silence. Please forgive me for the background noise. That's a fan running in the background because of the, you know, it's, it's, it's hot in here and I can't do the uh, air conditioner. So maybe I can turn it down here a little bit there. Because it's basically silent if it's down, but it's not as much. It's not as cool, I guess, but it is not too bad. It is Memorial Week, and it finally got warm around here. And I tend to record Timberwolves Explosion around this time to get caught up. It's kind of the lead-in to State of the Timberwolves 2022, which will be recorded in mid to late June. 
since we're kind of back on track, kind of back on time again. So we're probably only about two or three weeks away from the release of that show. Interesting. So I better get to work on that, like, immediately after the show. <laughs> better get to work on getting people to talk about their MVP and all that and this and that, doing research, mock drafts, and all that good stuff. Um, but, uh, yep, I mean, Conley, of course, definitely has had an illustrious career with the Denver Nuggets. Again, some wonderful acquisitions, some wonderful draft picks, this and that. Again, didn't start off spectacularly, but nobody really ha- did. You know, it seemed like nobody did at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> you try to look up mock drafts, and there's nothing here. That's nice. <laughs> That's Joey's style. So I apologize for that. CBS Sports is a good place to go, just kind of general, and, and they're pretty good at what they do. Jabari Smith is projected. Yeah, but Orlando did wind up with the number one pick again, which might be annoying for some of us old-timers that go back to the, at least the early 90s, so they got back-to-back first-round picks. Back then, there was only one ball for Orlando, but again, there was less balls uh, involved in the because they had the 14th, uh, they had the 14th likeliness of winning the first round, and they still got it. See, nowadays, if that happened with the 14th, you know, you're supposed to be 14th, they'd probably move up to, uh, I don't know if it'd be 10th or 5th or something. But yeah, you jump way up, but that's as far as you can go. You can't get the number one pick anymore because that's horrible. You miss the playoffs by like a game, a game or a tiebreaker, and you get the number one pick in the draft through the second year in a row. Like, that's BS. So people were pissed. So a little bit of those old wounds were kind of... Uh, had a little salt rubbed in. Jamari Smith had projected to go number one there. Chad Holmgren to the Thunder. Yep, Thunder will pick number two. Uh, Houston Rockets number three. Jaden, I, I, uh, excuse me, Sacramento four. Detroit fifth. They picked number one last year. Timberwolves, I believe, are yep, we're 19th in the draft. Let's see who they have us taking at this stage. Jaden Hardy, and that's a shooting guard out of somewhere. <laughs> Jaden Hardy. Out of the G, out of the G League. What what is this? Out of the G League? What do you mean out of the G League? Uh, is he just a? That's odd. Um, Seventeen points a game, only three assists, but that's okay. Three point percentage, a whopping twenty-seven percent. Twenty-seven percent. He played with the G League Ignite, but he wasn't igniting a whole lot. He's only six four. Why do you want a six four shooting guard that can't shoot? What what are you kidding me? Unless he's the best defender ever. I don't know. Um, yeah, party stock slipped a bit this season. This is uh, CBS Sports. With the G League Ignite, he was inefficient in his decision-making. It left something to be desired on the court. But, but, you have to love his overall production. He's a gifted scorer who is only 19 years old and has plenty of room to grow and develop. Still like uh, his talent as a definite first-rounder. Okay, but... I, <laughs> I think we got to go a different direction, though. Don't you? Don't you, though? Don't you want somebody like a bigger guy or a great defensive player or something? Or, you know, I mean, I, I get it. Or if you really want offense so bad, you know, maybe a guy who can shoot three-pointers? I don't know. I'm confused. What the heck? G League Ignite, though. Isn't that the weirdest thing? So, so what's up with that? You didn't even play for college? So, yeah, like Kansas. Yeah, they got the guy from going to Houston there. Duke, Mark Williams. I wouldn't mind Mark Williams. Yep, Mark Williams, a little bit of size there. Seven foot, 242. I want a bigger guy. Yeah, then you get your guy that's 6'8", 216, considered a power forward. Really? That's a power forward now? Uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I guess. <laughs> Six foot eight, 216. That's a power forward. Wow. That's really imposing, isn't it? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I guess I guess he is. <laughs> okay, let's get off of it. Um, Tim Conley, though, it's nice to be swinging for the fences, this and that. I, I like the move in that sense by uh, Lori and, of course, Alex Rodriguez. It's funny, Alex Rodriguez kind of hinted it out on his, uh, his it, you could see it on his iPad, I guess, on Instagram. Not that I have Instagram, I'm just passing on that report. Pardon me from others like the, the uh, you know the John Grzynskis and Derek Dougie Wolfsons and such, locally uh, in the Twin Cities or Minneapolis or whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, again, you know that that's that that had already yeah it was like a done deal like they were talking about the possible press conference and everything, you know the press conference the presentation and all that. Um, it was like on the uh, software was on the iPad where it was viewable, 
in the picture on Instagram where it's like, hmm, what's that all about? Tim Conley, Timberwolves press conference. Huh. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, of course, again, it's nice to swing for the fences, nice to swing for the bleachers and this and that, and that uh, you just hope and pray that it's the right move. Obviously, last time we did this, you knew it was going to fail because Tom Thibodeau's crazy. You knew that Tom Thibodeau isn't president of basketball operations uh, material. He's a coach. He's a coach and the kind of guy that can wear out. A coach with a, a shelf life. Just like acquiring uh, Spreewell and Castell was definitely a shelf life type of thing. It was not a good move. Um, can The whole question that I wanted to come into this, and I've been babbling too much and looking at that past draft, I apologize. Um, will he do what Mikhail couldn't? Where Mikhail just couldn't get this dang team past the next hurdle. Like you made the playoffs and you got beaten the first round. You got to the 50 wins, blah, blah, blah. And you made the playoffs and got beaten the first round. And then you made the playoffs again and got beaten the first round. Then you made the playoffs again and got beaten the first round. And it kept happening and happening and happening and happening and happening. And then, okay, screw it. We're going to go for it now. We're all in. Castell and Spreewell, two guys that'll last about six months. You know, it, you know, when you want to make a big move and your star player is under 30, which Garnett still was at the time, do you really want to bring in guys like that? It's like, I understand you're trying to go for the gold because you haven't done jack bleep. But if, it, if you don't win, it's over. You're dead. You're dead. And that's what happened. Um, it took a drastic type of move and a huge risk and a gamble going all in with a hand that maybe was about, it was like a couple of pairs or something. You didn't have a full house. You didn't have a, a flush, Kevin McHale. You had a couple of pairs, and they weren't really exciting either. That's basically what, what, what he did there. Um Unfortunately, it, it they were exci- it was freaking exciting at the time, but you just knew in the back of your mind it wasn't going to work long term. It might work for one year, and then a year or two later, because they're both free agents. Oh goody, um, they they're going to demand a bajillion dollars, and if they don't perform well enough, you're not going to want to give them that. And if you don't give them that, they're going to be jerks. You know, they're going to be a holes. Or if you give them too much, they're going to be they're going to be uh, you know com- complacent. It's really a no-win, especially with frickin' Spreewell. Lord have mercy, especially with frickin' Spreewell. Um, so the question is, can Tim Conley take this team to that next round, to the next round and the round beyond that, this and that? And it's a consistent thing, a sustained thing, where it's not just, okay, we jumped up one year, it's a little cute little head fake, and then we're completely out of the playoffs for, uh, how many years was it? About 14, 15 years, right? It was about 15 years, 2004. 0304 to 1718. My God, man. Over a decade. We were out of the playoffs for over a decade. Now, again, that's on terrible management afterwards. McHale could have had the team recover afterward, but it didn't work. He, you know, he made some nice moves, but it was the, we were kind of stuck with the stupid contracts and all the signing these other guys during that offseason, like uh, Trenton Hassel and, and uh, Troy Hudson. To long-term deals that, that just, you know, they, they just completely didn't work out. Trent and Hassel kept getting worse. Troy Hudson was always hurt. And he wasn't that good either. Uh, and he was another guy who would take stupid shots early in the shot clock and didn't make us better. He did not make the team better. He was just Kevin Garnett's buddy. And thank you, Kevin Garnett, for making sure to mention Trent and Hassel and, and uh, Troy Hudson in your Hall of Fame speech. Thank you, Kevin. Really appreciate that. That's an... <laughs> <laughs> so that's just further and further proof they were there because of him. Um, you know, we resigned him. We resigned them to those long-term deals because of him. So I know it's not all Garnett's fault, but he didn't help either when he did stuff like that. Didn't really help, or you know, when when he when like these guys have to stay, you know, that kind of BS, which LeBron has been very guilty of in every team he's been on, basically. Um, hopefully, Tim Conley could do that and get this team to that that next uh, plateau, so to speak. We don't want to be plateauing for six, seven years. McHale and Flip Saunders, after the sixth playoff exit in the first round, should have been fired by an owner with some balls. They should have been fired. Um, they should have both been fired, and I've said that probably about 50 times on this show. I apologize if that offends people, especially saying that about Flip Saunders. I'm not sure anybody would be offended about saying that with McHale, but then, oh, woo-hoo, you know, it's like, what was it, the, yeah, then we lost again, and blah, blah, blah. That wasn't the sixth time, but it was six years to, uh, I was managing the team by then. Yes. Um, or was it the sixth appearance? Yeah, because you had Houston, Seattle, San Antonio, Portland, 
And I think Dallas. So that was like the fifth, but it was like six years together. Yeah, the first year they didn't make the playoffs. Yep, uh, when they first got there. And the next year they did, and blah, blah, blah. Um, so hopefully Tim Conley can do that. Uh, Conley and Chris Finch. Tim Conley and Chris Finch it sounds pretty good to me. It sounds pretty damn good. And there's also rumors about possibly bringing in guys from uh, organizations that Conley has worked, you know, that uh, Conley either worked with in the past or, you know, worked with with the uh, Denver Nuggets and such that are pretty big names that are well respected throughout the uh, the NBA that could come in as the number two or number three guy, depending on who, who it is and this and that to uh, add another major piece to the front office. So pretty exciting going forward with Tim Conley. Looking forward to the press conference. I wish I could comment on it right now, but I'll have to talk about it on State of the Timberwolves 2022. Colonel Anthony Towns was uh, named to the NBA All-NBA third team, and congratulations to Carl Anthony Towns. There's obviously the silver lining to it because when he signs the next contract, it'll be a super max, which could be $211 million for four years. So we're talking about over $50 million a year. Yeah, we're talking over $50 million a year, which is like financial suicide. Well, not necessarily financial, but salary cap suicide going forward. But welcome to the Timberwolves. We should be used to it, right? We should be used to it. It's been that way forever around here, um, except when we were completely bottomed out and nobody wanted to come. So it's almost like uh, a double-edged sword. Uh, D'Angelo, uh, D'Angelo Russell's future, we'll see what happens. I kind of already talked about Gupta. That was another show point um, that he's probably not a happy camper right now, but we'll see. He's willing to work with the, willing to work with Tim Conley from all aspects, but doesn't really want to talk to the media at all. D'Angelo Russell, what do you do with him? Do you trade him? Do you buy? Do you uh, well? You don't buy him out. Do you? Uh, do you just let him walk and then open up the cap space? That wouldn't be the dumbest idea because you're talking about third. You're talking about a, a ton of cap space next year, even with even with the town's huge uh, new contract. Because uh, the basketball related income type of deal, the salary cap should be pretty damn high. So that's the good part. I personally would not be terribly against hanging on to D'Lo and letting the contract uh, run out if if that's the case because that'll give you much more cap flexibility. Not just for standing free agents, but for making trades. For making trades. And at the same time, maybe you can just make trades with the uh, expiring contract, because other teams like to do that as well. As for what's acquirable, I mean, there's all kinds of rumors of, you know, some some exciting home run type swings for uh, Damian Lillard. How many draft picks would you have to give up? That'd be the thing. But that's a home run, that's a home run swing at the very least. It's not necessarily a home run, but it's a swing for it, that type of deal, because if he can stay healthy, Dame Lillard is a phenomenal player, and uh, that's the real deal this time. Um, D'Angelo Russell was a big name, but he wasn't the real deal, was he? Just once in a while. Dame Lillard's a real deal. Uh, he's, he's an asshole, too. He, he has that asshole-ish look to him that, uh, yeah, <laughs> about, <laughs> about 40 or 50% of the NBA is guys like that that are a little bit a-hole-ish, but oh well. Maybe he's uh, the good kind that'll, uh, yeah, catapult this team in the right place. Obviously, he's hungry. He's never won a championship, this and that. Uh, the other a-hole that could be acquired is a guy that we wouldn't want. I don't think he'd want to come here. Uh, after what we did to him, disrespected him to such a big level, uh, <laughs> Russell Westbrook uh, from the Lakers, that would be a, 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 a cap type of move as well where we would just let him go and free up a bajillion dollars in cap space. But I think you would gut the team in the process. I, would, I can't imagine Tim Conley doing that. But who knows? There's always a minor possibility. Um, you got Collins. Collins is a possibility which can help shore you up at power forward long term. But, but his defense is below average. So, uh, again, do we have to suffer getting our asses handed to us down low in that sense? Again, Carl Anthony Towns' defense comes sometimes is good and sometimes it's not. Uh, in college, it was really good. And a lot of people thought, uh, I saw him as a David Robinson type in the NBA, a guy who could go out for 25 to 30 and play phenomenal defense in, uh, at, at the same time, which is what David Robinson did with the Spurs in his prime. I saw Carl as that kind of guy coming into the league, but the defense is very much more sporadic than I expected. And uh, Collins from Atlanta, his defense is below average at best from what I've heard. So from what I've heard and from what I've seen, um, so I'm kind of a wait and see mode on that one. Obviously, another expensive acquisition in that case. So there's all kinds of possibilities going forward. Me, I'm not in a rush to make some huge, crazy trade. 
that will that could potentially damage this team. Russell Westbrook, that's suicide. Don't do it. Don't do it. Look what the Lakers did. They went from a championship level team, championship level team when healthy, to a team that I wouldn't touch with a 39 and a half foot pole. In fact, I flat ripped them all year. I made fun of them all year because it was that annoying to watch. And I kept telling you on this microphone last summer, LA, don't do it. Please don't do it. I don't care if he's from California, if he's an LA guy. I don't care. He's going to kill you. And he did. And now you got Darvin Ham as head coach. Well, okay. Maybe he's the coach of the, of the century. I don't know. He might be a damn good coach. Sometimes those role player guys really are. Tyron Lue's pretty good. Blah, blah, blah. You know, Phil Jackson was a role player. You know, fantastic coach. Blah, blah, blah. Kurt Rambis is a role player. Not a fantastic coach. Not really at all. In fact, he's not even a good analyst or anything like that either. Uh, yeah, you don't really see his you don't see his name or his face, his voice anymore, anymore anywhere, which is too bad because he was a very, very popular um, guy with the LA Lakers years ago. That's unfortunate. Let's get to the playoff catch-up. I'm kind of babbling and rambling on. I, this is longer than I expected, but well, there's always a lot to talk about, a lot on my chest, and I don't know, it's my own fault for babbling too much. So let's look around a little bit at the uh, NBA playoffs and kind of get caught up with it. The freaking Suns lost. I can't believe it. I can't believe the Suns lost to the Dallas Mavericks. And they almost acted like, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You know, they, they, they wanted it more. I am so tired of that. You guys, this, this was the opportunity of a lifetime. And you let Dallas torch you on your home court game seven. That kind of stuff cannot happen. I mean, cannot. So it's too bad because Monty Williams, really good coach and coach of the year and well-deserved. And you can't even get out of the first round with, was it, what was it, 64 wins this year? 65 wins? Oh, man, it's, it's so sad. And guess who's representing the Western Conference in the NBA Finals? I'm just all warm and fuzzy about it. It's not the Phoenix Suns, because they went belly up against the Dallas freaking Mavericks. And the Mavericks went belly up against the Golden State freaking Warriors, because Memphis couldn't finish the job against them either. The Warriors are back in the Finals. <laughs> the Warriors are back in the finals, yeah. You know, Dallas, they had some moments, and everyone was talking about uh, Luka, like he's the next, you know, god of the NBA or something. Like, there's no god of the NBA. There is none. Um, but, you know, the next whatever. The next, you know, like two times better than Larry Bird. Beyond Larry Bird, man. Beyond Larry Bird. Just like Marbury was beyond Magic Johnson. And I just rolled my eyes all, all those years ago. Because Magic, you, you don't just write off Magic Johnson like, who gives a schmuck? He, he, you know, you don't just write him off because the because the new guy can dribble can can dribble good. Ooh, he's got the best double crossover in the history of the world. Yeah, well, Magic had a better career than Stephon Marbury. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, and Steph Curry can still shoot, and Clay Thompson can still shoot, and Draymond Green can still harass and drive people crazy, and Andrew Wiggins is better now, and and he's actually kind of clutch a little bit. And he actually shows up to play consistently a little bit. Good for him. Um, it's just totally figures. And D'Angelo Russell is a complete moron. So, And they got a first-round pick that I'm not too excited about yet. But you just knew it. You, you just knew it. You just knew it at the time. You just knew it, didn't you? Minnesota sports, right? Yeah. Johnny Flynn looked a heck of a lot better than Steph Curry, too, didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. I hate Steph Curry, but you know what? He's back in the finals again. And he's back in the finals again, and they're probably probably going to win their fourth. Ugh, go Boston. Come on. Hopefully Boston can get the job done, but they couldn't finish him off yesterday. Similar to 2012, right? Gosh, that's crazy to think Boston and Miami have tipped off in the Western Conference, or Eastern Conference Finals three times now. Miami's 2-0, and and they're trying to go 3-0. and They have home court advantage in game number seven. But let's back up shortly here. Miami went right through L uh, Atlanta, unfortunately. The Battle of the South there. Miami Atlanta, 4-1. to one. I think I already talked about that, the advancing teams. Miami beat Philadelphia pretty handily in four games, or five, six games, pardon me. Boston-Milwaukee was an awesome series, and I kept thinking that's who wins the East. Boston and Milwaukee, the Bucks get dethroned in the game in the seventh game in Boston. Sunday afternoon, seventh game, Sunday afternoon in Boston. That's Boston Celtics every time over the course of Decades and decades and decades and decades. They always talk about Sunday afternoon in Boston. Game 7, Sunday afternoon in Boston. Celtics always win those, baby. And it was cool to see. Unfortunately, this one is a Sunday afternoon in Miami, Florida. 
A lot of people do believe Boston will win that game, though. So, and I would not be surprised. They have that road, that tough road grittiness. Um, but the player of the NBA playoffs has been Jimmy Butler. The number two guy's probably got to be um, the Magic Johnson Award winner of the Western Conference. I don't think he's going to win the Finals MVP, but maybe he will. Steph Curry. He, so there's a name now. You have a Western Conference Finals uh, trophy now, which is kind of cool. Just like the ALCS MVP and NLCS MVP in Major League Baseball. I'm glad that they introduced that. It just sucks that it's Curry for the first one. But that figures. He finally got some kind of MVP award in the playoffs. He's got the, uh, he had a regular season MVP in that 73 win season that uh, finished in second place. <laughs> oh, good memories. Good memories for me. Uh, <laughs> um, but it just would totally figure. You get two guys, two of my least favorite players in the league for so many reasons. Good players, but hate them with a the passion. Jimmy Butler for all the havoc he wreaked here against old rubber muncher himself, Steph Curry. Oh, come on, man. Jimmy Butthead versus old rubber muncher. The guy who likes to chomp, chomp away on his uh, mouth guard. Now, I, you know, hockey players do it too, but I'm just saying. Certain hockey players like Matthew to Chuck and stuff. Um, but when you have a name like the Chuck, you, you could imagine him chewing away at his mouth guard. And basketball looks a little bit different. Um, but yeah, you might get Butthead versus Rubber Muncher. That doesn't sound good, does it? But uh, that just might be your finals. Hoping for Boston, and hopefully Boston could be that gritty, tough team that frustrates the Warriors and ends up bringing home the, uh, the Larry O'Brien. And we'll see uh, Jason Tatum holding the uh, Bill Russell Award. That's basically, yep. Yeah, so now they have names on all of them. The Bill Russell MVP. But uh, I don't know, maybe it'll be someone else. Maybe it'll be Jalen Brown. Marcus Smart, which would be kind of crazy. Um, but we'll see. It's going to be epic Game 7 tomorrow in Miami, Florida. I'm hoping and praying Boston goes all the way and wins it. Anybody but the Warriors, though. My favorite team is the Timberwolves, and my second favorite is whoever's playing against the Warriors. So, that type of thing. That's how I roll. Uh, the Warriors are my Green Bay Packers of the NBA. Uh, you know, NBA, uh, uh, NFL, our local fans here hate the Packers very much, of course. But um, my prediction is, well, <laughs> I'm praying and I'm praying so much for Boston to do it. I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna just say Boston, even though very strong possibility Golden State pulls this off. But Golden State could choke and blow it. Uh, Boston could show up and get it done. But right now it looks like yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, it looks like the Warriors are gonna win again. Sucks. With that, we'll take a quick break and do a fan interaction. back here on Timberwolves Explosion segment number two. Again, two segment show with these off-season ditties. We'll see how long this is. Apologize that I went on and on and on in that first segment, but I don't know. I, I enjoyed myself, and it's been a while since I talked some Timberwolves, and there was a lot to get to and this and that. I probably didn't need to go over so many of the trades, but I don't know. It's just an idea to kind of see what Tim Conley did in Denver, and again, apologize for some of the background sounds possibly with the fans going here, because it's the heat's rolled in for the first time in a few months here, uh, many months. Um, so, first of all, I wanted to mention again that it is Memorial Day weekend here in the United States. Obviously, a, a big chunk of you live in Australia, which is absolutely fantastic, and I absolutely love you guys to death. New Zealand as well, maybe other parts of Asia and such, or Europe, or Canada. But here in the United States, we want to honor, we want to remember and honor our... Uh, armed forces going all the way back to the Revolutionary War and even before that with the pilgrims, soldiers that came here from England and armed forces that were developed over the course of time here in the United States, but a particularly Revolutionary War, Civil War, uh, War of 1812, which is when England tried to kind of come, England tried one more time, basically. Um, World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War, Iraq 1, Iraq 2, Afghanistan, other operations. 
Um, just want to honor all of these troops. We may not agree with <laughs> the way things were handled in every single war and every single operation, but at the same time, the troops, the troops themselves, and the people that made sacrifices with their, their time, their energy, and even their life over the course of these many, many years, these 250 plus years here with the Revolutionary War, 240 plus years with the Revolutionary War, but uh, before that and such as well. Um, just want to honor each and every one of them, uh, George Washington, all the way up to current generals and such. Uh, we're going to give you all a moment of silence. God bless the United States and our armed forces. To the Twitter account at TWolvesEX, at TWolvesEX, and please do click on the links in the show description for crypto.com. If you want to get into cryptocurrency, it'll help the show uh, with a referral link. And Vigit, also, again, the referral is Paladino Live. I'm not going to get too much into those today, and I, I'd like to, but it's just not reciprocating a whole lot lately, so apologize. Um... I was kind of going off and off and flipping out during some of these losses and such. I was saying just wow and then bleep you, Tyus Jones. People were kind of mad. I couldn't believe it how things went down down the course of time. I'm going to get to all the notifications. That'll make it better, make more sense here. Where was I? Yep, this will make more sense if I can get this all together. I had it and then I got cued here and I apologize. Where are the retweets? Doggone it. So the retweets, yep, there it is. Now I'm back where I need to be. Wow, nice amount of people retweeting here. Uh, Levi Brown out of New Zealand. Tanae Brown out of New Zealand. Derek Felska, Western Wisconsin, but Minnesota sports fan, of course. And yep, Benzo out of the Bronx. Out of the Bronx, all retweeting the most recent episode. Thank you so much. Tanae Brown actually also shared it. Episode 336, Steve Hildeclamp. Thank you so much, Tanae. He says, can't wait to listen to this one. What an interesting week it's been for the Timberwolves. Yeah, all the back and forth and the incredible frustrations and such. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining and being a part of things. Um, Wombat, what did he say here? I was saying bleep you, Tyus Jones, because I was mad with the shot. And Wombat responded with, no, Cat and D'Lo have sold the entire series. It sure, it sure felt like it, didn't it, Wombat? Thank you for the response. Looks like we're following each other. That's good. Yeah, I thought so. I thought we were, and that's good. Um, Tanae Brown says, fun season, flat ending. D'Lo is going to enjoy playing for the Magic or something next year with his expiring contract. Can't think of one reason they'd sign him to an extension after that series. Oh, I absolutely can't think of any reason at all. I was, yep, I was saying just wow. Um, I quote tweeted back. Why? Why is it not showing it? I thought I quote tweeted and responded to him. What, did I get deleted or something? Come on, people. That's dumb. Mm. Well, we'll see if we'll figure it out here. Yep, Ben Stramano, looking at the positives. And yes, there's positives. I was just not in the mood at the time. I was really mad. And I, I apologize, uh, Vince, if I come off as extremely terse at times in these stupid... When these stupid things happen, these stupid losses, I, I get pretty terse, and I apologize, Vince, that I get that way. He was saying, future's bright, mate, against Vince Germano out of Australia. Gosh, and I've known him almost a decade now. The summer of 2012, so right about there. Almost a decade, Vince. What do you think of that? Tanae was about 2013-ish, so about nine years. Man, isn't that cool? Tanae and Levi popping in later on. Um, just not that long after that. Um... He says, future's bright, mate. This was a massive learning curve for your young squad. You'll be even better next season, believe that. I think so. And at the time, though, I was just terse and pissy. And I said, I'm not ready for that yet. Next year never comes in Minnesota. I'm sorry, Vince. I'm really sorry. I was flipping pissed. Because three games, three games, you give up 10 plus point leads. And then one, one of them was 26. And it was like 26 and then 20 later on. Like, come on. You've got to win those. So I was beyond furious. Again, I apologize for my terse attitude there. I think I apologized right after that, if I remember correctly. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I snapped here, and I said, boo, three double-digit leads going into the fourth quarter, blown in the same series. I want zero, and I mean zero positive spin right now. Unacceptable. There's no escaping it. And Benzo said agreed, yep. And Swankentar. 
Oh, we're not following each other. I'll give you a follow. Hopefully he responds. Swankender says, yep. Trade Cat. The <laughs> Trade Cat, he had his chance to show it this year. I, I can definitely understand that point of view. Yeah, I mean, it's, I know. People will probably be like, you can't say that, Joey. Well, hmm. Optimistic Wolves fan? What was he responding with? I was saying, grats, Memphis, good luck not getting swept by the Warriors. And I was saying, F the Warriors. I hope they fall flat on their face. I don't like either one of these teams. Awesome. Optimistic Wolves fan responded with, no. For everything that's good in the league, you want Warriors, Suns, in the Western Conference Finals with the Suns advancing and getting swept by the Bucks or Celtics. I would have loved that. I would have loved that. I mean, I part of me wanted the Suns to win it all. Partially, it's mostly for the fans, though. I don't even like Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Devin Booker, ugh, I don't know. Something about him, he just bugs me. And, you know, Chris Paul, Chris Paul acts like he's all, you know, and I, I can understand Beverly's dislike for him because it's really intense. Chris Paul acts like he's little Mr. Innocent nice guy when he's a total a-hole, and everybody knows it. He's a complete a-hole. <laughs> you know, and it's plain as day. Um, so it, it's hard to like them either. I mean, Marcus the Forecaster used to call him a douche like every five seconds. He was constantly calling him names. So obviously, and Marcus the Forecaster can identify people's behavior pretty quickly. Um, so yes, I can understand that. It would have been for the Suns fan base, like 50, 50 plus years of heartbreak. Got, getting close all the way back to 1976, you know, losing to that Celtics team. You know, and they got beat pretty handily in that final game, if I remember correctly. Or no, it was a close game. It didn't. Yeah, it was a really close game, and they, they never got to see Game Seven. Uh, who knows how that would have gone? But it was just, you know, probably would have went to Boston anyway. But um, it would have been cool seeing a rematch with Suns and Celtics. That would have been awesome, and it just didn't happen. Uh, the, we'll see if the Celtics get there to play the Warriors. We'll see what happens, and hopefully they do what uh, the old Celtics would have done to the old Warriors. They would have beaten them. Uh, we'll we'll see. Bucks unfortunately unable to repeat. This year, we'll see if they uh, get two out of three. Two out of three ain't bad. We'll see. What was I saying? What was I responding? Um, I was saying, as long as the Warriors don't win the championship, I'll be satisfied. That team can go somewhere. An optimistic Wolves fan said, yes, agreed. Cool, with a smiley face. And... He also responded with, these babies at Memphis shouldn't get rewarded for bitching about the refs who were giving them this series when it was already over, 4-1. to one. Yeah. I think that was later, right? No, that was us. Yeah. Um, we we should have. Yeah, it's just a damn shame. Yes. Uh, Phil Mackey. Phil Mackey, locally of Score North, says, D'Lo has been really, really bad in this series. I said, trade him immediately. And then Benzo replied with, he probably wants out anyway after being benched. We can't pay for this. Yeah, I agree, like $30 million. And I was saying, we can only imagine what Flip didn't like about him during his first impression way back in the 2015 draft. His outright arrogance is disgusting for someone that hasn't done anything. Yep, I was saying that about D'Lo. Yeah, Flip Saunders did not like D'Angelo Russell. Did not like him at all. Uh, oh, yep, and I told Vince, sorry for being so crabby. Just phrase with how this went down. Vince says, all good, mate. So, I hope it is. I hope it is. <laughs> yep. Vince has been a, Vince is a lot busier guy than he used to be. Um, Mino had actually a, is this French? I'm 99% sure it's French. A very intriguing, res uh, yep, so it's it's cool that you can get translated. He spoke the entire thing in French. Je quatre, tu, okay, sorry. I can't do it right. And he says, I think you for, and it's amazing how you can get the translation here from Mino. I'm guessing he's from Fonze. He was talking to me and Mr. Uh, Mackey. I want to follow him. I'm, I'm guessing he won't follow back, but maybe. Mino says, I think you forgot, and it, this is a French translation, I think you forgot that without him defensively and offensively, we are nothing this season. I invite you to look at the offensive and defensive rating when D'Lo is on the field and when he is off the field. Don't smear someone's name in anger. That was actually really... <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I said, no, this is the playoffs. And an elimination game. Don't agree with you. Sorry, man. Phil Mackey's right. I know. I thought He talked with a lot more class than I did. So, I know. I, I was pissed off. And I did think Phil Mackey's right. The next response is, I think you are overreacting. I had the same reaction for Cat, but I redid a few matches this season. And shit. What did we play? And And shit. 
did we play well and what could we have trembled trembled for, for them best season for wolves in a long time and Dilo has a lot to do with it I understand I understand you know and uh Sorry, I, I'm sorry for overreacting a bit. Man, that was about a month ago already. It's been a long time since the last episode. Um, maybe I was overreacting, you know, and I hope to hear from you, if possible. If possible. It'd be nice to hear from him. Uh, nice to hear from him again. Thank you for the nice uh, nice message there. That was actually really kind of good. Um, yep, and I was talking about the press conference again. Oh, I was, I'm going back to it. Benzo says, he the one, Jack. Benzo out of NYC, of course. The Bronx, in that case. Ah, uh, what's Levi replying to, and how is we... Okay, Jace Frederick. Okay, he was trying to get it. He was sharing it to us, basically. Jace Frederick, no team in NBA history had blown two double-digit fourth quarter leads in a single series prior to this series. <laughs> Minnesota just blew three. Folded again, and again, and again. Memphis was physically and mentally tougher. Yes, they were, actually. Yep, so, yes. That's why the Grizzlies are advancing 4-2. to two. Thank you, Chase. Man, he looks like he's half my age, doesn't he? And he's got, like, a real job, and I'm what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, at least I have a podcast. I have a podcast, Chase. I have a podcast. He, he probably does, too, though. <laughs> so I can't get too excited. Wow, that was a lot of likes, actually, for what I said for once. Ah, uh, I think that's the same one. It is. It's got to be. Yep, it is. We're, like you're overreacting. Yep. I was saying, it's funny, we we just lost, and, then I'm, and I'm already cheering for the Memphis Grizzlies because how much I can't stand the Warriors. Too much pinned-up dislike for that team. Tanae says, yep, I'm with you there, mate. Thank you, Tanae. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. And, and I said, boo. Boo, if you're not tired of the Golden State Warriors, I don't know what's wrong with you. Who was I replying with? Who was I replying to? Okay, maybe I was just talking. And then Chan responds with, I don't know how you're rooting for job, job more fraud. Yep, <laughs> yep. He's like, why am I like job as a fraud? Yep. Nick replied with, yep, Nick Team is out of Aussie. He says, don't know if that nickname really works, man. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue. It, it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> okay, why does it say quote tweets when there aren't any? That's dumb. Weird. It must have maybe somebody was quote tweeting it and then it didn't work out. I don't know. And I said, honestly, I can't stand either team. Go Phoenix. Vince told me, you got to stop interacting with peanuts. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> yep, I get too, too worked up. Yep. How dare you call him a peanut? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I said winner of the Bucks and Celtics series will represent the East in the NBA Finals. Well, it's not officially uh, a failed prediction yet. We'll see. Nick agreed with it, and a few others. Rodman. Oh yeah, I was saying to Dave Benz, like he's gone now. Isn't that sad? Dave Benz is now no longer the play-by-play -play voice of the Timberwolves on television, the television side. Dave Benz was basically not renewed. So that's unfortunate for him, and uh, God bless him going forward. I didn't mind him at all. It was, the guy that I didn't like was John Grandy. I wasn't a big fan of his. I didn't like his voice. His, I, I don't know. Something about him came off as a little arrogant, too. Like, Dave Benz never... I never felt he was arrogant. And then Mr... Um, m um, uh, I'm almost, I always call him Marv Elbert when it's not even close to his name. Uh, Kevin Harlan. He sounds like Marv Elbert a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, because that same kind of, what a great play, you know, but obviously a different accent and everything. Um, yeah, because just the huge voice. Uh, Kevin Harlan, yeah, legend, absolute legend. Um, Tanae Brown was just, yeah, he's tweeting to me and responded back and forth. Uh, Tanae Brown says, I still see the Golden State Warriors going to the conference finals, but damn, it was fun to watch them get an annihilated by Memphis in Game 5 despite them beating us. Crazy how matchups work with Steven Adams making a big difference for Memphis in the series, but being unplayable versus Cat. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's weird. Levi uh, continues saying, As much as he annoyed me with big threes versus the Timberwolves, I'm glad Tyus has filled in well for Memphis while Ja is injured. Yep, it was a big help. Tyus Jones and there's you know, people think that maybe the Wolves will go after him in free agency. We'll see. But yeah, great takes there, Levi. I apologize for 
being super late and invisible and all that crap. I'm really apologizing because, yeah, I was a, you know, that was the spring cleanup season during that time, and it was really tough this year. Every, every year it seems like it's tougher. It seems like, you know, we had less help this year, which was really, really sad and disappointing. I was saying, someone tell me what has happened to the Phoenix Suns. Very disappointing. I don't even like Dallas at all or Golden State. They can both disappear in a black hole as far as I'm concerned. Nick Timas, Australia says, yeah, I was checking the score updates throughout the day, completely flabbergasted, and that was in Game 7 when the Suns got absolutely smashed. It was ridiculous on May the 16th. Honest to God, I couldn't believe it. They just went completely belly up. This is me. And you'd think they'd be a lot more hungry than last year because they were so close and they lost to the Bucks. But that's what happens when you lose. Tomorrow never comes. When you're all, we'll be better next year. We'll get it next year. You don't know that, bro. You don't know that. And I'm not a guy that says bro at all, but I'm saying it now. You don't know that. You don't know that. You have to go. You have, if, if you get to the finals and lose, it is the most devastating thing in the world because you don't know if you'll ever be back. If you believe you're going to be back like yeah, again and again and again, I don't know. You're probably not going to be. LeBron thankfully got another chance. He failed again. The first go-round with the Miami Heat, but after that he got a couple, and then one more with the Lakers many years later. So at least he tied up with Steph Curry. Now, unfortunately, old rubber muncher might take the lead again, which would piss me off. But go Boston! Go go Celtics! Go Celtics! Go Heat, believe it or not. Yeah, and I, and I loved the Heat back in the day, but Jimmy Butler makes me not like him. Nick responds with, I think Luka, Luka's going to do an 07 LeBron and drag not a not-ready team to the finals. Warriors not looking great. Oh, how I wish that was the case. I wish that was. I wish Dallas got to the finals and got beat by the Celtics or the Heat. I would, yeah, because I don't like Dallas. I don't like that. Ugh, I don't like anything Dallas since the North Stars moved there. Hate Dallas sports. Dallas sucks. So what was I talking about? Anthony Edwards again. What was I? Okay, it was a reply to Hoops Central. Name an NBA player you think will take a giant leap next season. I do think Anthony Edwards because, well... He had some moments this year, but he didn't take the giant leap. He didn't take the giant leap yet. In the playoffs, it looked like he was about to. Um, it really did. Uh, it looked like he's on the cusp of taking that giant leap, Anthony Edwards. Um, obviously, his, his shooting needs to be more consistent. And his overall shot selection needs to be more high IQ, that kind of thing. Because if he gets to that point, it is going to be an absolute pleasure for every Timberwolves fan on the planet to watch. So I said Anthony Edwards, Sonny Brown says if he starts finishing consistently at the rim, he'll be taking over games with ease. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. <laughs> Amen, brother. Didn't I not? It's going to say no quote. Okay, this time he did. I said he's going to be unbelievable, and the new Pobo, Tim Conley, will be blessed to have him. Mm-hmm. The new Pobo, Tim Conley, will be best blessed to have him. I think I was late to reply a couple of days, which sucks. Today is probably like, ah, oh, screw him. Because he didn't even like what I said. That hurt. Why, why didn't you like it? Okay, sorry. <sighs> oh, yep, and then today up, because today up today went on to a new one here. Yep, he replied. He says, that's a great hire, too, by the way. He's done a great job with the Nuggets. Yep, generally speaking, absolutely. Isn't it funny, though, how the first move they make is like, when, when it's like, there was, their, you know, their, it's their first ever stint as a president of basketball operations. They bleep up real bad. <laughs> At least, at least those three guys, you know, Connolly, Flip, and the Con, all bleeped up really bad. Uh, McHale really, really did a freaking great job. He looked like a legend. Like they called him the architect in the Star Tribune. It was a really big thing, like the architect, because you had Garnett, Marbury, Gugliotta, you know, and all that was left was either a center or a shooting guard. Then you had Anthony Peeler. Oh, we got the shooting guard now. We just need a center. And oh my God, whoo wee! Yep, you had Anthony Peeler who could actually make a three pointer sometimes. He had that red hot year because it was a contract year. Funny, and right after that, not really. Um, yeah, not a, not really. After that, <laughs> okay. So that's the end of the interaction on Twitter. Quite a bit, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. Thank you so much, today, Vince Germano, uh, Levi. Thank you so much, Benzo. Heck yes, Benzo, um, Chan. I think there was, oh, Nick Timas, of course, Nick Timas. My apologies. Um, I think there's one or two more. Otherwise, it's like likes, retweets, stuff like that. Reese Padretti, that was a like. He did uh, tweet. 
um, Mino, Mino out of out of Fonze, I believe, out of Fonze, uh, or he's French Canadian, I don't know, but I think he's Fonze. Uh, very cool. Thank you very much. Well, Fonze means French, out of France. Sorry, Fonze means French, right? He's not out of French. He's out of, yeah. I think you get it more than I do. I'm just an idiot. I apologize. At T Wolves E X. Now Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion. I don't think there's interaction on here. Oh, there's a comment. At least one. And I'll check that one real quick. Come on, man. Yep, and yeah, that's Le Levi saying awful nerves. Yep, I agree. Awful nerves about Adrian Payne's death. 1991 to 2022. 31 years of age. <sighs> With those, that ugly uniform on, but uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a bigger deal than that. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, just let's see if Wayne had something to say real quick. He usually posts in the Facebook page, not in the um, other thing. This is an old one where I was maybe waving back. And, yeah, that's somebody from way back. These are old. Let's get to the comments. Awful news. This kid is different. That was on the last. Yeah, that was on the last episode, I believe. I don't think it was, actually. I don't think it was. Yeah, this is, so I'll read this. This is new from the last episode, at the very least. Um, I'm going to read both of them. Yeah, because I think, I think the last episode came out a little before. Dan May and all them. Okay, yeah, there's a couple comments. I don't think I read these on the last episode. He's, yep, no, I didn't, because the series hadn't ended yet. Okay, so, good. Glad I can get to this. Apologize. I'll even go back here. There's actually one even further back from Wayne. Apologize. I really apologize. And I apologize, Wayne. It's just, it was like right after that, cleanups. You know, it was hell. But here I am. Here I am, a whole month later. I'm sorry, Wayne, really. Wayne, again, the alpha dog of the Courtside Podcast. Wayne Hunt out of Sydney, Australia. Vince Germano out of Melbourne, Australia. And Stu Benson out of Sydney. He liked to tease me earlier for rant ranting about uh, Stu Benson. I'm going to say this real quick. He teased me for ranting about uh, modern music because I hate modern music. I really do. And he's like saying, I'm the old man yelling at a cloud. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm an old man yelling at a cloud. But there's one thing we absolutely both agree on, and he said, I'm Team Joey on this about people getting on their damn speakerphone in public and getting real loud and stuff. It's like, get the hell out of here, man. So thank you very much, Stu Benson, for agreeing with me on that one. Um, yes, it is so freaking rude, isn't it? Okay, let's get to Wayne Hunt's comment. This show is going to be way longer than I was planning on, but that's okay, I guess, as long as you don't hate me too much. Wayne says, just wanted to say best of luck today in Game 6, which might sound funny coming from a Grizzlies fan, but this has been a great series. Just two young, great, just two great young teams, warts and all, in a playoff clash. This is exactly what we would have wanted at the start of the season. Cheers. And thank you so much, Wayne. I agree. I agree. And thank you very much. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for the Wolves. Wayne says, what a series. Not the outcome Wolves fans wanted, but a lot to be proud of nonetheless. McDaniels was a revelation. He will only get better as the team develops. Uh-huh. Your backup point guard, forgive me, I can't remember his name. That would be McLaughlin always seem to make, Jordan McLaughlin, always seem to make the right plays. I would give, have given him more minutes and moved D'Lo to the shooting guard. Mm. Yeah, possible. Possible. Coach Finch, I've been blown away with the ball movement during the regular season and even more impressed with his out-of-bounds plays in this series and to think Cat didn't want him. Hmm. If anything, it was your bigger names that were a no-show. Beasley. D-Lo, where did they go? That was funny rhyme. D-Lo, where did they go? And like I said, a week ago, <laughs> playoff experience. You add playoff experience to this roster, and I think Minnesota takes the series 4-1. to one. Wow. You've got to close out a game. You have to minimize the mistakes. Yep, yep, yep. The, but the best part about this loss, hopefully, and I'm uh, hopefully, and one I said a few years ago, when Utah eliminated us out of the playoffs, is the taste it's going to leave in Edwards' mouth. I think this will spark a fire, and we will absolutely be dreading his future squads. I I actually have a lot to say about Towns and how he conducts himself. 
ill-advised shots, the pouting, the lack of accountability, but I'll save that for another time. And yes, you are very free to bring that. Please do. Please do, Wayne. I love what you have to say. For now, I'll just say congrats on a great season. Thank you to those Wolves fans who, ex who kept it civil, and the future is bright. Hope to talk soon. Cheers, Wayne. Thank you so much, Wayne Hunt. Thank you very much. There was a lot of replies here. Well, seven. I'll get to him as soon as possible. Wayne says, but seriously, 2.16 to go in the game, 17 on the shot clock, and you shoot from there. Yeah, stupid. That was, that was Carl Anthony Towns. That was a stupid play. Um, Dan May said, what a great game today. Good win. Desmond Bain is an outstanding shooter. Yes, he is. Yep, and Stu Benson says Jordan McLaughlin. Yep. Stu Benson said that, or excuse me, Wayne Hunt said, that's the guy. He was such a steady hand on the court and much cheaper than D'Lo. Zing! Wayne Hunt said, yeah, it's a shame D'Lo didn't play. And excuse me, Stu said it to, to Wayne Hunt. And Tanae jumps in and says, I think Ben Simmons made more of an impact. Oh, that's me twice, so that's okay. I think Ben Simmons made more of an impact for the Nets than D'Lo for the Wolves in their respective series. <laughs> Pretty much. And Wayne Hunt says, D-load and steam system error. Yep. 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 Pretty much. So that's that. Uh-huh. And then today shared this. Uh, basketball forever. D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell's 18.1 points per game in the regular season dropped to 12 in the playoffs. Carol Anthony Towns, 24.6, dropped to 21.8 in the playoffs. Anthony Edwards was the only one stepping up with 21.3 to 25.2. And yes, you could see it. You could see it. There was a different... And you could see the... See, Anthony Edwards seems like kind of a chill, fun person. He actually... We actually saw anger on his face when they lost Game 6. He was angry. That's a good sign. He isn't just Mr. Chill and, and happy-go-lucky. And I didn't think he was, but you actually saw it for real. You actually saw it for real. Wayne Hunt will wrap up this right here, saying the kid is different. What a fran what franchise players do. Rise to the occasion. Better start surrounding Edwards with the right pieces so his talent and hard work don't go to waste. And we'll end on that note. Thank you, Wayne and Tanae. Thank you. That is a great way to end things on the right note in a lot of ways there. You absolutely nailed it, Tanae and Wayne, with that one. That's That makes us all feel a hell of a lot better with things, and now you got the uh, president of basketball operations to lead the way in Tim Conley and uh, Sachin and Gupta. Maybe you can help them out with a little trade machine action, working together and figure out where to go with this and pass on some knowledge and work together with each other. Sounds like their personalities will not clash, but they will be good. They have similar personalities. I would probably fit in with them too if it means like yeah, like a nice guy who isn't the, the who isn't necessarily looking to be the life of the party. That's me. I, I'm not the life of any party. I'm just kind of a quieter, nice guy in person. I, I, I have a big voice at times, and I can be fun, but I don't overdo it. And I, you know, I'm not seeking crowds. Other people do. So that's kind of what they are. So I, I'd fit in with them, too. Please hire me, guys. I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, you probably won't. Uh, enjoy uh, looking forward to what these guys will do in the future, regardless of what their personalities are. As long as they work together and do a good job, and we take the step forward, it'll be absolutely great. With that said, please do write a positive rating for Timberwolves Explosion on any of the uh, apps that allow you to do that. Really appreciate those of you that have in the past, but it's been a long time, unfortunately. We uh, really appreciate someone if they could. With that said, please uh, be ready and prepared with your Timberwolves MVP, biggest disappointment and biggest surprise of the season, heading into State of the Timberwolves 2022. We'll preview the draft, preview free agency, talk some more Tim Connolly, uh, and put a bow on the whole season from start to finish without babbling too much, I hope. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't babble too much this time around either. With that said, have a wonderful Memorial Weekend for those of you that are celebrating it here in the United States. And God bless all of you in Australia. And thank you so much for the support in Australia and New Zealand that have supported this show for a decade. Uh, a decade. I just love you so much. And I really mean that. Uh, talk to you very soon. And God bless.